Hello everyone and welcome back to our Raspberry Pi series and today we're on episode 3 and we're going to be looking at how to install Raspberry Pi OS onto an SSD drive or a USB flash drive. It's the same process for both. Um, primarily in this tutorial I will be using an SSD drive um, but the same thing can be used with a USB flash drive. At the moment we're on Windows. If you guys are on Linux or whatever you can just use a terminal as usual. So the first thing that we need to do is make sure that we have a terminal environment on Windows 10. So um, we're going to download a program called Putty, which we can get through searching. Good old Google. Right, so Putty as free SSH. Download it here. And then we want the, I'd say the 64-bit version. And then save. From here we want to run this. Okay. Let me close out that window now. So we go next, next, install, and then yes, and then finish. Untick the view readme file because you don't need that, and then click finish. As we're going to search for putty. So we have another guide on our website on how to um, find your IP address of your Raspberry Pi, which I'll link in the description below, which you can follow, and that will show you how you can find your IP address um, across the network. So I'm going to presume you've read that or you know how to get the IP address or you know the IP address of your Raspberry Pi 4. So what we're going to do now is my IP address is 192.168.2. I think it's 5. We're going to connect to the port 22. So we're just going to click open. And then we're going to say yes to the security host key. And then it's going to ask us to log in. So log in as. So we're going to put pi. And our password is raspberry. Raspberry. Okay, from here we've got to update the Raspberry Pi to make sure that it has all the latest packages. We're going to go sudo apt update. And then we're going to go sudo apt upgrade. And then yes, Y for yes. This may take a while, so you may as well grab yourself a cup of tea and come back when it's complete. Now that that's completed, we're going to do a full upgrade now. So we're going to go sudo apt and then we're going to go full tack upgrade and then we're going to press enter. From here, we're going to look at the Raspberry config and we're going to edit a few settings in there. So we're going to go sudo Raspberry config. We're going to navigate down to option 6, advanced options, press enter. Then we're going to go down the list to A6 boot order and press enter. Then we're going to select B1 USB boot. And now we're going to press OK. Now we're going to navigate down to where it says finish. And we're going to press enter. And now we're going to reboot our device. We're going to press yes. Now, as you can see, it is told us that it's detected BCM2711 detected, dedicated VL805 EEPROM detected. So that's cool. So we know it's installed. Um, and it said it's updating the EEPROM. Again, that's what we want to see. So what we're going to do is we're going to close out of this terminal window. Okay, now we need to open up a fresh PuTTY terminal window. So we're going to go back to PuTTY. And then from here, we're going to put in our IP address, 
0.168.2.5 and obviously you would put your IP address click open okay so we're going to log in as pi and our password is raspberry so R A S P B E R R Y and there you are we're in so from here what we've got to do is we've got to verify that the bootloader is up to date so what we're going to do is we're going to put in sudo RPI tag ee prom tag update and as you can see that we are up to date um, it says here that the bootloader is up to date so that's all we need to check so now that we've confirmed that the bootloader is up to date what we're going to do is we're going to edit the bootloader configuration we're going to do that by putting in sudo tac capital E RPI tac eeprom tac config tac tac edit okay now what we want to look at here is that under boot order that it says 0xf41 so what this boot order represents if you have an SSD drive connected through the USB port and it doesn't detect the bootloader on that device so it does basically won't be booting into it it will default back to the SD card now this is helpful if you have any problems with that SSD drive that you can basically get back into your system and recover it um, there's also another option that you could set here which would be 0x4 it will just boot straight to the USB mass storage if it doesn't find it it won't boot at all so um, personally I think it's best just to have that as a, you know have the SD card there as, as a backup I mean we're not going to have the SD card attached but in the near future if you ever want to gain access to it for whatever reason you can you can slot in an SD card into the back and then you can boot into it again so what we can do now is exit from here by pressing control X and as you can see it said that it's been detected and it's asked us to reboot so what we're going to do now is um, reboot the system uh, we're going to get our SSD drive and like we've done in our previous video if you want to go back and look at episode 2 uh, we taught you how to install the Raspberry Pi image by using the imager um, to install the operating system onto that SD card but this time we're going to use an SSD drive so we're going to connect our SSD drive to our computer and we're going to do the same exactly the same process you're best off watching that video if you can to finish this off reboot Okay, so we've been disconnected and once you've done that, plug that SSD drive into your 3.0 port, which is the blue one, on your Raspberry Pi. Then you'll want to take your SD card out of your Raspberry Pi and then you want to power on your Raspberry Pi and it should boot straight to the SSD. Just as a side note to let you know that Windows will not recognize the SSD drive when you first put it in. But if you open up the Raspberry Pi imager, it will recognize the drive and you will be able to write to it just like the SD card. Um, also please make sure that you follow the previous guide and you also make sure that you enable SSH because we're going to need that as we go forward um, into episode 4. That concludes today's episode. If you have any questions please let us know in the comments below um, or on our website. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.